I was called as a college student in 1961, graduating in Russian, uh, to follow JFK's appeal to do something for my country, and that I ended up in Washington, where I became chief of the Soviet foreign policy branch in CIA during the 70s. Later, I briefed seven, I worked on the seven presidents briefing with the president's daily brief, three of them, one of them one-on-one -on -one during the first four years of Ronald Reagan's term. It was a privilege. It was very high duty. Before that, I was trained by Jesuits at Fordham. Uh, required were intensive courses in ethics, but more important, just as important, I would say, in logic. Now, Thomas Aquinas didn't know much about nuclear weapons. So I have been educated by people like Professor Peter Kuznick, and, and I thank him for his words about madness. I'll be discussing the opposite of that, which is sanity. And also by a psychiatrist friend of mine, it's been been a big help in making me helping me on this. No, no, I'm not a, not my doctor, <laughs> my psychiatrist friend. Okay, now I'm going to do a little syllogism, a little updated syllogism because we did so much of that at Fordham that I can do that uh, pretty automatically. It's going to be slow, but I ask you to pay attention because each sentence matters, at least in my opinion. Fitness for office is critically important. The most essential feature of fitness is sanity. In the nuclear age, sanity rests on appreciating an absolutely fundamental truth. And that truth is that there is no security without mutual security. Any president or anyone running for president who doesn't understand this is not sane, no matter how smart he or she is. In the nuclear age today, the golden rule has become not just a, a moral imperative, but a practical necessity. I'll say that one more time. In a nuclear age, the golden rule has become not just a moral imperative, but an existential, a practical necessity. Now, there are various versions of the golden rule in various, uh, almost all uh, world religions that I know. Uh, and uh, this is a, a key factor because intuitively, in my view, people know that the golden rule is the way we're supposed to behave. Um, what I would like to just simply say is that there were two people in my experience that got the golden rule and understood that there could be no security without mutual security. And that was John Kennedy. See his American University speech, for example, and Ronald Reagan, who together with Mikhail Gorbachev, eliminated, destroyed a whole class of intermediate range nuclear weapons starting in 1987, uh, something that was annulled or just, 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 just gotten out of by Donald Trump in his last year in office. Now, what I'd like to do is simply uh, emphasize that this sanity factor is a nonpartisan or bipartisan, or it's an objective fact. So is the golden rule. Now, common to all religions that I know, and even to humanism, uh, when I say even, also to humanism. Now, Kurt Vonnegut is one of my one of my favorite people, okay? And I'm going to finish up by quoting from him because he experienced 
what John Kennedy experienced, the war. John Kennedy with the Cuban Missile Crisis faced with the decision as to whether to confront the Russians and risk destroying all of us. And Kurt Vonnegut, uh, captured uh, during the Battle of the Bulge in 1945 uh, in, uh, in uh, Dresden when the firebombing took up to 250,000 lives in two days in 1945. He was there. His job was to pick up the pieces of the bodies and bury them. So he knew what he was talking about as well. Here's Kurt. How do humanists feel about Jesus and the golden rule? Quote, I say, if what Jesus said is good, and so much of it is absolutely beautiful, what does it matter if he was God or not? If he had not delivered the Sermon on the Mount with this message of mercy and sanity and pity, I wouldn't want to be a human being. I'd just as soon be a rattlesnake or a cockroach. Now, does it take a trauma such as our JFK? And Vonnegut suffered to come to the sensibility and say, wow, we need to be sane here. And we need to realize that collective security is the only way that can ensure our security. Well, it takes a little mind bending. Sanity wasn't really mentioned very much so far. Peter Kuznick, of course, mentioned insanity. And so I would just finish uh, w with this and, and say that anyone who is president or running for president needs to understand that there can be no security without mutual security. That is just sanity. Now, our group of veteran intelligence alumni established ourselves three months before the, the war of aggression on Iraq. And uh, I just leave you with the notion that we included that word in our last uh, label there. And this is a message I bring to you uh, from veteran intelligence professionals for sanity. Thank you very much.